everyone. You are listening to your Palm Beach Guide with the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce. My name is Keanu Rivera, and I am the Vice President of Membership at the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce. Today, we are joined with Robert Gaeta. And just a little bit about Rob is his journey in the hospitality industry spans over four decades, characterized by an unwavering dedication to service. Starting from modest beginnings, he took on various roles from dishwasher to desk clerk while diligently obtaining his degree in hospitality from SUNY Delhi and Rochester Institute of Technology. I didn't know that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Throughout his career, Robert remained a prominent figure in New York City's hospitality scene, managing such prestigious hotels as the Sheraton NY, Wellington, and New Yorker. Notably, Robert played a crucial role in launching Brooklyn's first boutique hotel and an innovative all-apartment-style hotel in Midtown East, showcasing his managerial prowess. His tenure at an exclusive Old World Social Club in New York City further cemented his reputation as a versatile and accomplished leader. His ability to navigate through challenges with resilience and grace, along with his exceptional leadership skills, earned him recognition and accolades. In 2017, his contributions were honored with the General Manager of the Year Award by the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association, the Greater New York Chapter. Robert's advocacy for people with disabilities in the workforce garnered com commendation from the Brooklyn Bureau president. Robert also twice received special official recognition from the NYPD for his assistance. Currently serving as a general manager of the Ambassador Hotel and Grill in Palm Beach, Florida, Robert's commitment to service remains unwavering. He finds a joy in welcoming guests from diverse backgrounds, crafting meaning meaningful experiences, and inviting them to experience the beauty of Palm Beach. In Palm Beach, Robert's new home, he has found a profound sense of belonging and continues to make a lasting impact on the hotel industry, embodying a legacy of passion and dedication to hospitality. So Rob, thank wow. you so much thank for you. being here. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. Well, you shared so much in your bio, <laughs> but I love it. I'm it's, humbled. <laughs> no, seriously, it's incredible. <laughs> And I want you to take me back from the beginning. So sure. you started in New York. Is that what I hear? I started in upstate New York as a dishwasher. Wow. At a quality inn. Okay. And I had to set up banquet rooms as part of the job. That was mm -hmm. my first job in the hospitality industry. Wow. Um, my family background was that they had a boarding house for the coal mines in the early 1900s. No way. My Italian immigrant family. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, on my father's side. So... Yeah, it's kind of a history of hospitality in my, Absolutely. In my genetics. <laughs> well, I think too, too, and I tell everybody this, I think everybody at some point in their life needs to either serve in the hospitality industry or they need to work in a kitchen before they like join the real world because you learn so much when you're either behind the counter or you're cooking or you're cleaning or whatever it is, because even the bar industry too. So like I also started um, there and- I just think you learn so much. It's yeah. such hard yeah, work. It is. It's so, so hard. And you learn the best customer service. You learn sales, people skills, the whole thing. You mm -hmm. learn it all in the hospitality industry. So kudos to you for starting out there. Thank you. Um, so from there, where where did your journey take you from there? Well, then I was a bellman at the Marriott. Then I was a desk agent while I was going to college in Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. Then I started in New York City at the Sheridan. Okay. Um, as a guest service manager in an 1800 room hotel with a desk in the middle of the lobby. Wow. Overlooking seventh Avenue, quite a job for a young yes. man. Um, looking out on seventh Avenue is great <laughs> window to the world. Um, but, uh, we greeted people from all over the world. We used to like to say that, uh, wow. we didn't have to travel cause the world came to us. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> cause you're right there in Times yeah. Square, a few blocks off from Times Square. Okay. But I was a liaison for any departmental issues right. or anything happening with the guests. So that was a lot of fun. It was kind of a baptism in fire. I had five phone lines, <laughs> 1,800 rooms above me, the banquet space. Oh so that goodness, was- Oh uh, you managed it all. And I was wow. a guest service manager. Jeez. Yeah, at the, at the Sheridan, that's how I started. So then how then long were there, you, yeah, how long were you in New York? Uh, well, thir in New York City after college. So I was there for 35 years of my career, I want to say, 37, Wow, something like that long time. Yeah, it was a long time. From there, I was a concierge in a private um, uh, condo Okay, where supermodels lived. I won't mention them on air. Nice. But uh, nice. yeah, it was, it was a good experience. Very famous people lived there. Um, then from there, I went to the um, to the Wellington Hotel and I was okay. assistant manager there. And it, I learned the fun fundamentals, a lot of fundamentals right. there in terms of the overall running okay. of a hotel. It was a 620 room project with lean and mean management. Oh, um, so you know, it was right next to Carnegie Hall. Okay. So it was a cash cow 
for the Jeez. owners there. Yeah. Um, Mid market hotel. Okay. So, but we were close to Times Square, and we um, I learned revenue management there. I learned guest services there. A lot of a lot of things I learned there. And then from there, I went to the New Yorker Hotel. How long were you there? Uh, I was at the New Yorker. I was at the Wellington for. Well, 11 years on and off. Okay. Somewhere in the middle of my Wellington venture. Right. I, uh, adventure, I um, became a uh, office manager at a private social club, which I think kind of geared me up for Palm Beach. Right. Yeah. So tell um, me a little bit about this. I remember we briefly well, spoke about this. It, it's called the Lynx Club and okay. it's in Manhattan. It's a very exclusive right. uh, club. Some names you'd recognize, but faces you may not. Okay. <laughs> so it's old, old world, you yeah. know, the JP Morgan crowd. Great. So it has connections to Palm Beach. Okay. Definitely. Sag Harbor, Palm Beach, you know, yeah. it's a very exclusive membership right around the corner from the ladies version of the same, which is the Colony Club. Okay. So um, I was there for about a year and a half. And then I got invited to come back to the Wellington Hotel and live on site as the resident manager at the Wellington. Great. So that was beautiful. So altogether, I was at the Wellington for 11 years on and off. Yeah. And when I left the last time, they said, you can't come back. They're a third like, time. Nope. So they said, we brought you back twice already. So, the, so I, I um, actually went to the New Yorker, okay. which was a thousand rooms. Jeez. So I managed the New Yorker Hotel for uh, three years. That was an interesting project. Right. Uh, unique kind of ownership uh, arrangement there. Thousand rooms, half hotel, half offices. Oh, it was office space. And we had two oh. restaurants. We also had connections to the Hammerstein Ballroom, which wow. was the same ownership. So, Holy cow. Got yeah, a lot going on. A lot of moving way. parts. Right. So I was on the executive committee there as rooms division manager for uh, 350 associates reported to me as a union property, branded. Yes. Mm. So it was a Big box. Big box. There you go. <laughs> and they were undergoing a renovation at the time too, oh, which was another goodness. component to it. So wow. it was a great project. Right. Then I had an opportunity to um, go to Brooklyn, which I'm fourth generation Brooklyn Wow. on my mom's side. So that was kind of fun and a project near and dear to my heart because right. I opened Brooklyn's, helped to open Brooklyn's first boutique hotel. Wow. And from what's construction, that? construction, you know, ground up construction. Mm -hmm. What's the name? A Hotel of Blue. Oh, That's beautiful. in Park Slope. Okay. Yep. Um, and it was a little space heater at my feet and an AOL connection to sell the rooms. Um, you know, no windows in the place yet. So we were wow. selling an idea or a concept, a rendering. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle hotels really hadn't come into play yet. Boutique right. hotels were something new. Okay. So this is one of the first like, lifestyle type brands. And, it, and the only other hotel in Brooklyn at the time was the Marriott. Okay. So this was the first hotel, Brooklyn hotel, right. uh, boutique hotel and lifestyle hotel. And Brooklyn wasn't even a destination at that time. Brooklyn was a um, kind of an overflow from Manhattan. Oh, okay. So Brooklyn tourism became a thing. So I was working a lot with the borough. I was a lot in the right. newspaper a lot and in the television spots a lot. I felt a lot like I was stumping for the borough more than I was, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> it comes with the territory, right? It does. It does. Yeah. So it was a new market. Okay. So that was kind of exciting, you know, creating something from nothing. Right. Um, so Brooklyn tourism now, it's a given, right? Right. People are like, oh, I'm going to New York just to go to Brooklyn. Exactly. It's become a distant destination in and of itself. So it I, I felt like I contributed a little bit to that. You definitely did. In a small way. Yeah. But um, that was a fun project. Oh, that's good. And then um, I managed an all suite property in Manhattan on the west side, branded property, uh, Best Western, but it was a all suite apartment hotel, mm -hmm. not your typical Best right. Western hotel. <laughs> um, it was kind of the flagship for New York for Best Western, but I was there for about 12 years. Wow. It was a small property, which I liked because I had my hands on the levers. I was able to. Yeah, you had it all kind of there. Yeah, I was able to control, All you know, a right. lot yeah. and be interacting with guests, which kind of had, I had lost a little bit right. with my New Yorker experience. Okay. They'd ask me like, what's going on with the guests? And I, you're like, I don't know. I, I would be in meetings all day. I'd say, right. cause I'm in these meetings. It's hard for me to know, you know, I'll go right. ride the elevator and talk to some guests. Yeah. And see Just ride up and down. On. That's what you do all day in a thousand room hotel. So if you really want to get uh, feedback from customers, right. the best thing you could do, you have a captive audience Okay. And get them in the elevator and uh, ask That's them how they're enjoying idea. their stay. You're like, talk to me now that we're stuck here right. in this box. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So oh. from there, um, I always wanted to move to Florida. It was always my plan. Um, so after COVID, not during COVID, we kept the hotel open. I, I went through a lot of iterations and catastrophes in New York with the blackout, 9-11. I was involved a lot with 9-11 with one degree or two degrees of separation from 9-11. Oh. One of the most interesting things, that uh, most exciting and awe-inspiring things that happened was the Miami police drove down to Florida in 20 hours. I mean, from Florida to New York City in 20 hours after 9-11. And we put them up at the Wellington. And I was wow. so proud 
to have them arrive at the hotel, five squad cars, I and they drove that. nonstop from Miami to Florida to be there on 9 11. And, and I got a call from NYPD and asked me, can we house them? And I said, Psh, of course Absolutely. we can house them. So then when they got there, I wanted to cry. Yeah. But you they asked me, where pay? can we put our squad cars? And I said, right here in front of the hotel. Oh, good. So, and then they went down there almost every day for like a, a month or a few months, you know, trying to, right. in the rescue effort. There was that, then the blackout in New York. So there's a lot of interesting I experiences. I think too, just to talk about 9-11 again, I th feel like my generation is might be one of the last ones that has some sort of memory when 9-11 happened. Cause mm -hmm. whereas like my parents were like, I cannot believe this is, and you, you were there. Yeah. Like my uncle on my dad's side lives in the Bronx still. He's like stayed in the Bronx his entire life and his wife worked in the trade center. Oh boy. And so I just have this memory. I was at home after school on this like really ugly couch that we had. I don't even know why I remembered the couch, but <laughs> I just remember I was playing with blocks on the couch and my dad was just like frantically moving around the apartment with my mom there. And my mom was just like staring at the TV kind of like in a state of shock. And my dad was on the phone calling my uncle cause he was there. And it's just crazy because that's the memory that I have mm -hmm. of 9-11. And I talked to some of my friends who, who, you know, obviously, said the same thing. And it is that it's that very like distant memory of like, we were watching our parents reaction to it. Right. So I couldn't imagine being there. And, and I, I've only been to New York twice my entire life. Oh. Not a, I mean, I love New York. I mean, I don't, I don't love New York. I'm not a New York person. <laughs> you love Palm Beach. I love Palm Beach. I love the beach. I love the sun. Right. I don't like walking everywhere. Mm -hmm. I like to drive. I mean, <laughs> all of it. But when I went to New York for the first time and I went to the memorial, right? The, yeah. And mm -hmm. it was the most in, just intense feeling I've ever felt. Sure. Being on property there. Mm -hmm. And I just bawled my eyes out. <laughs> I just cried. And it was, and now when you read about it, of just the unity like you said, these, how the whole country came how together, the whole country came together right. and you talk about whether you love New York or hate New York. Right. Exactly. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we, like, it doesn't, we were all right. Yeah. And, and to hear that story about, you know, the Miami, you know, squad cars driving nonstop up there, just mm -hmm. that sense of community really makes my heart happy. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. It was an amazing time. And I mean that they did that um, very sad time, right. saying, but, but also in, amazing. Wow. Just people, how people reached out. People. I, I remember that the general manager of the hotel who couldn't make it in from New Jersey said mm. to me, how many rooms are you giving away? And yeah. I said, you don't want to know. Yeah. I said, but believe me, it's good karma. Good. It'll all come back to you. Absolutely. So we had Chicago fire uh, bagpipers wow. for months and months and months uh. for the fire department's, you know, services. Good. We had um, Buffalo rescue fire. We had Baltimore rescue fire. We had policemen from Canada come down. Wow. Yeah. We had all kinds of, uh, from all over the country. So Jeez. all in the effort to, you know, that unity though, that's, was that's incredible. amazing to experience. Yeah, wow. it was, it was wow, a special, wow, wow. special time, but also a very sad time. Right. Um, well, real quick. So after that, yes, well, I came to Florida. Yes. After that, you came to Florida. <laughs> after COVID, we kept the hotel open right. during COVID, which was another Fiasco. Another thing, <laughs> right. the whole other thing to talk yep. about. Um, but we, and then after that, I was at, and everything that was happening in New York, I said, right. it's time, it's time for me to move on. Make the jump. Yeah. So I we moved down, down to Florida. I've brought my family We welcome down you, we New Yorkers Florida. with open arms. <laughs> I've been, but I've been coming to Florida for the last 30 right, years right. Uh, with my mom down here. Oh, good. My mom was in Delray for oh, good. before okay. that. So we've been in and out of here yeah. for 20 years, Miami before that. Right. So, but we, I've always loved Palm Beach. It's amazing. Town of Palm Beach. It's unbelievable. Right. We live in paradise. We beach. truly do. We really do. All well, is right with the world when I went out and exactly. when I go out and look at that beach. <laughs> I know. You know, know, and so now I'm at the Ambassador Hotel. Right. Real Residences quick. and Grill. Before you talk about before we talk about Ambassador, because I want to give that its own separate piece. Okay. I have to do our plug real quick. So oh, great. you're listening to your Palm Beach Guide with the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce. And today we are joined um, by Rob Gaeta and he is with the Ambassador Hotel. So now we'll transition to Ambassador. Tell me everything great. about it because they it's a beautiful property. It is. And there's exciting news and just tell me yeah. all of it. Okay. Well, um, I started at the Ambassador Hotel Residences and Grill about a year and a half ago. Right. Um, it's a beachfront hotel. Um, 
It's a beautiful property. All the rooms have been, all the, it's an apartment suite property. In the town of Palm Beach. In the town of Palm Beach, right. in the South End. South End. Which a lot of exciting things happening in the South Woo. End of Palm Beach. And to be completely transparent, right. um, the Ambassador Hotel uh, Residences and Grill will eventually mm -hmm. sunset. Okay. And, um, but I mean, we're running it at 110%. Good. Everything is running as if, you know, the hotel is going to stay open forever. Mm -hmm. uh, we give it our all. We provide, you know, all the services wow. and, and the restaurant's fantastic. We have the chef from the Chesterfield right. who used to be there for 17 years. Um, the hotel itself is all apartment suites, full kitchens in every unit. Uh, we're right on the water. Right. I mean, it's a gorgeous pro piece of property. Yeah. Um, and our guests, you know, come for relaxing vacations and uh, they can take advantage of our restaurant, which is great. We have live entertainment every Saturday night at our restaurant, right. which is fantastic. And, uh, but eventually, I guess, from my understanding- Can we is, share? We is can share breaking? a little, little bit. A little teaser. Yeah, well, o Oco Group out of Miami bought the property uh, a couple of years ago. Okay. Along with the- adjacent property across South Ocean Boulevard. Okay. And the plan is to develop a luxury, exquisite, elegant condominium. Mm. They also are affiliated with Amon Group. So it'll Beautiful. be something beyond beyond even expectations. Right. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, project for Palm Beach. It fits in with the comprehensive idea of what Palm Beach, town of Palm Beach is. Right. Um, in terms of its ex exclusivity, in terms of its elegance, in in terms of the luxury exquisiteness of what they envision to happen there. It's going to change the landscape of the entire South End right. of Palm Beach. It'll, and it'll set the sta the gold standard of what everything is to follow at, on the South End of Palm Beach. So very exciting projects, low density. Okay. It's only going to be 49 units. So it's actually scaling down from what from oh, the hotel. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? It'll be only 49 units. So, so it'll de-intensify. Right what's happening in the town of Palm Beach and, you know, raise the level of exclusivity and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, elegance, I think for the town. So it's a very exciting to, for me to be a part of that project. Yes, you're a part also. of this, right. Um, you know, right now we're providing all the services of, an, you know, we're running the, our hotel just as if it would be here forever. Right. Um, and it's a beautiful place. Um, the location is fantastic. You can't it beat it. We love Palm Beach. And we're so excited to wow. be part of the community. We think this is something ter terrific for the community. Right. So, and we're excited to contribute even now and then right. past the ambassador time. Exactly. To, to what uh, Palm Beach is all about. So we're very excited about that and our participation and involvement. Will the name change? They haven't picked a name yet. Okay. They're brainstorming okay. names brainstorming now, actually. Names. So if you have Great. any suggestions. Oh, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I, I, can certainly, <laughs> I can certainly put them before the OCO group and I let like them uh, have, decide if they yeah. uh, if it might be a good fit. Oh, my goodness. I was thinking of some on the way over here, actually. Oh, well, I mean, the drive is nice, so yeah. it gives you a lot of time to think. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, maybe New Horizons, something, you know, like, oh, okay. like something because it's something right. new, new for Palm Beach, right? But especially for the south end of Palm Beach. Right. This will be something too, so different from a departure from what's there now, I right. think. Right. And too, I mean, Oco is so well known. Mm -hmm. So that helps too. Bringing that kind of name to Palm Beach is amazing. So it's exciting to see all this new growth, honestly. It is. It is. It's and, crazy because we're living in it. We're living in this time of, of change and transition, but ultimately it's it's excitement and growth. And it is. that's the mindset. You know, we need to have it's growth, but it's not growth in it's a bad like way. It's not like intense, like oh my gosh, we're right? Gonna it's flip it's it it's growth. It's change in a good way, right? To to upgrade, right? right? This is like an upgrade from what's exactly. there now. Exactly. So exactly. Um, and will it be both properties? The one it'll be, yeah, both both sides of okay, the street. Okay, great. It'll be three buildings. Okay. Um, Still part residential or no? Uh, it'll be all residential. All residential. All okay. residential. Wonderful. Which will completely. Totally you know, change it. Wow. Change yeah. the traffic and the intensity, you know, the density of what's going on there will be diminished right. by the project. So okay. we're excited about that too. Hopefully still some amazing restaurants, some amazing event space, fingers crossed. I hope that would come up there. So we'll see. We'll see if we'll that's. See. I hope. Fingers crossed. Get us an amazing <laughs> restaurant, Rob. We want an amazing place to eat. I'll pass that along. Yes, pass it along. <laughs> All about the food here. Well, the grill is great, right? The grill so is the, so good. The ambassador grill is fantastic right, right now. So, Perfect. well, so as, as we close, kind of tell, 
you know, people, how they can support the ambassador while it's still around. Mm -hmm. Um, Can they, you know, share about the live music and the restaurant? I mean, tell us a little bit more. Well, where we welcome people's families, if they need accommodation for families from out of town, we're there for that. Mm -hmm. It's all apartments. So it's easy to, it's, you know, luxury living. Um, You know, it's, it's lifestyle living as opposed to, you know, it's like an extended stay property more than, but we do sell by the night. Yeah. Um, so for that reason, it's great. And our location right on the beach. Beautiful. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Um, words don't even describe how beautiful it is. <laughs> you just need to schedule an appointment with Rob <laughs> to go see the there space you go. because it's incredible. It is really. And have a tour of the grounds. It's gorgeous. It is beautiful. And the grill, of course, you know, it's a uh, casual, right. fine dining. Right. Delicious. Um, you can get a hamburger there, you know, handheld things. Right. And you can get a fine, you know, an entree. Right. So we offer the best of both worlds, best but it's both. casual dining. Good. We're open Wednesday through Saturday okay. from four to six for happy hour. Five o'clock starts our normal dinner. Okay. Um, on Saturday nights, we have different varied kinds of entertainment. We have uh, Sarah, Sarah Drebin who sings with us. Sarah She's, is also a member of the chamber, so plug Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving Sarah a little plug yes. here. She's fantastic. She's She amazing. sings Broadway show tunes. Right. She's performed at Don't Tell Mama. She's part oh. of our regular, regular cycle of uh, yeah. musicians that come in. Yeah. Um, Marco Greasy also performed at Sunfest a couple of years ago. Oh, awesome. He performs. Okay. Younger guy. Yeah. Appeals to a little bit of a younger audience. Younger crowd. Here we go. So yeah, we're excited. Um, and we're doing a lot of different things in the restaurant. We'll have some specials over the summer during the off season. Okay. Great. Uh, which should be great. So we're excited about that too. Wow. Well, Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much of for course, having me. Yeah, you're listening to honor. your Palm Beach Guide with the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce. And today we were joined by Rob Gaeta from the Ambassador Hotel. Thank you so, so much. On Palm Beach. So thank you again. <laughs>